Calm weather is a welcome sight around here in the winter, but too much of a good thing can be a bad thing, even deadly. In this week's Heather's Weather Wise, I'm recapping the infamous London smog event of 1952. Fog for Londoners is like snow for us Buffalonians. It's just part of the climate. The city is located in southern England, very close to a couple different bodies of water. That gives the city a maritime climate. Plenty of moisture, plenty of cool air. A prime recipe for fog. Fog on its own is harmless, but you add in some human factors and that's where things start to get tricky. Picture this. It's the mid-20th century. Great Britain's economy is finally regaining some life after a post-World War slump. Industries are burning more coal. Families are driving more and utilizing new major highways. And no one is regulating how much pollution is being released in a city of close to 8 million people. So there was a lot of extra stuff floating around in the lower part of the atmosphere. All of that stuff did two things. Number one, it made the city's air quality absolutely terrible. Number two, it gave water vapor in the lower atmosphere something extra to condense onto, leading to even more fog. The smoky fog that resulted gave rise to the term smog in the 1900s. Smog was proving to be a public health issue, but still nothing was done to prevent it. That is until the 1950s. In early December of 1952, the combination of pollution and an unusually still weather pattern killed an estimated 12,000 people. So here's what happened. Starting on December 4th, an area of high pressure set up right over southern England. Now underneath a high, the air slowly sinks and there's typically very little wind. That's usually not too much of a problem for a couple of days, but this pattern persisted for a week. Meanwhile, business as usual down at the ground. Factories continue to produce emissions, people continue to drive their cars, and people also continue to burn fires in their homes. Well, all of that pollution and emissions, because the air was so stagnant, that pollution had nowhere to go. Nothing was there to sweep it out. So a thick fog developed over the city and it was combined with all of that pollution and it only continued to thicken through the rest of the week. The air was so thick that conditions were pitch black in the middle of the afternoon. Finally, after five suffocating days, a cold front moved through the UK, the wind picked up from the west, and the air was swept clean. It would take a few more years, but Britain's government finally passed the Clean Air Act, and serious issues with smog haven't been seen since the early 1960s. But of course, London will always be known for what they call their pea super fog events. That's it for this week's Heather's Weather Wise. I'll see you next week with a new topic, but until then, remember, it's good to be a geek.